It is the great The Show Must Go On story. Uh, he, Leonard Bernstein, had no idea he'd be conducting the next well, day. It's, 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 it's worse. The setup in the thing is, is actually quite funny. He, uh, he performs, he has this opportunity at the town hall to perform uh, I Hate Music, you know, his horrible, wonderful piece that Jenny Terrell, he performs it. The family comes down from Boston. He, uh, how do you call it, does these four or five numbers from the song cycle. And he says, the reason I called it I hate the reason I called it I hate music is because the girl in the apartment next door start to scream I hate music every time I started to play, <laughs> you know, um, and very funny stuff. He performs that. His father's not too impressed with the performance. He says this is terrific. Lots of people applauding. But can you pay your bills? <laughs> you know. Then he goes home and gets drunk. When he goes to the party and gets completely drunk, he rolls into bed at four o'clock in the morning. At 9 a.m., as he says, the goddamn phone rang. Senor Berenstein, this is Bruno Tirato here. Who? What do you mean, who? Your boss, manager of the New York Philharmonic. See, Lenny, wake up. This is it. Our guest conductor, Bruno Walter, has fallen ill and Rodzinski is nowhere to be found. You will need to conduct at 3 p.m. And Berenstein, remember, you will be broadcast live across the entire nation. Allora, get out of bed. Ciao. <laughs> And as Lenny says, such a thing had never happened in New York Philharmonic's memory if it had ever happened at all. I quickly got dressed. I did my musical homework. I ran across the way to Walter's hotel room. By the time I got to this poor man, he was completely wrapped in blankets. He was shivering cold. His teeth were chattering. His lips were blue. The sweat was pouring down his face. It didn't matter. He pulled out all the scores. He put them on the table. He opened up to the very first page. He stuck his finger on the first bar, and there together we went through every single note, every single nuance, everything that that man did with that orchestra and rehearsal. He showed me there that day. And this was perhaps the greatest lesson in music that I had ever had. It was a lesson of generosity. Then I ran across the way to Carnegie Hall. I was backstage before the performance. I was pacing like an absolute maniac. Can you imagine 25 years old, never even having conducted the orchestra, going to be broadcast live across the entire nation? Just at this point, Serato goes out and he announces to the entire Carnegie Hall crowd that Bruno Walter is ill. He will not be conducting that day. So if you can only imagine what a 3,000-person groan sounds like. And so on and so forth. I mean, it's a wonderful story. It's an amazing story. And, and the response to it, not only was it being broadcast live, but the idea that his appearance would be on the front page of the New York Times the next above day. Above the fold, I think, even. Or I don't know if it was above the fold or under the fold. It was in the front page of the New York Times and picked up internationally. You know, this was major, major news. And I suppose the kind of news one wanted when all the news that was coming out of Europe and everywhere else was so terrible. I mean, this is November 1943. The news was not good. Wherever you looked, the news was lousy. So did they refer to him as a Jewish kid? No, but they, ref they told the story. And this arguably changed the course of American music.